Hello everyone. If you've been following my YouTube channel for a while, you've probably seen these motors running. I've been putting them together for the last couple of years. And I'm here to announce today that the book is finally out. It's finally published. So at the end of February 2016, the book has come out. So detailed plans. It's 200 and almost 250 pages with incredible detail, lots of pictures, uh, lots of information, how to put these things together. Everything is diagrammed. Everything is drawn out. You basically have your blueprints and your shopping list all ready to go so you can make any of these low temperature differential Stirling engines. Now let me tell you just a little bit about what you'll learn in the book. All four of these motors are detailed in the book. They're all modeled after a traditional pancake style low temperature differential Stirling engine. All of these have been capable of running off the heat of a warm hand and there's even some videos on YouTube that will show you that. Some of the unique challenges that you'll learn how to overcome in the book. Um, I'll show you how to make a circle cutting jig so that you get a nice true round flywheel that really makes the engine look sharp. I will give you some hints and clues on how to deal with acrylic, both for the straight edges, which makes the engine quite easy to assemble, and for those who want the traditional round engine, I'll show you how to curve that acrylic. So there's, there's lots of hints and tips on working with acrylic to make it look pretty and make it look nice. In fact, you can even see one of the pedestals is even made of acrylic. In the first book about Stirling engines, we overcame friction by changing uh, some of the traditional angles of, of the axis of the, of the flywheel, for instance, and we used a magnetic drive so that there was less uh, contact moving parts. In this one, we've gone back to a traditional design and we've been able to overcome the friction problem by putting a Teflon bearing, uh, a real simple little Teflon bearing, on the main axle and you can see them out here on each of the drive crankshafts. And so I'm going to, uh, we talk in the book about where to find that material and how to work with it, uh, how, to, how to make it turn out nice. If you unload one of these flywheels, so you take off the connecting rods and you give it a spin, it will actually spin under its own inertia for over a minute. So the Teflon bearings are very successful. I also give you a, a section in the book that tells you how to make the foam displacers. I go through some detail. I show you how to make a hot wire foam cutter. And you can even see some videos of that one on the YouTube channel. And lastly, there's a section in there for the, the geeky people who like research. I tested about oh, two dozen different materials for homemade bearings and when I settled on the Teflon, and all of that testing and research is, is detailed in the back of the book. So I encourage you to take a look on Amazon or your favorite online bookseller and order a copy of More LTD Sterling Engines You Can Build Without a Machine Shop by Jim R. Larson.